let me take you through the MG36 made by H&K. And it's basically the automatic rifle variant of the G36 as used by the German Army. Now like all G36s, it has a few things in common. One is side folding stock, trigger mechanism that can be pushed pin in or out so you can change for different modes like two round burst or semi-automatic only. Magazines that kind of have a clear greenish texture that you can see the rounds through and they also clip together. It also has a handguard that can be push pinned on or off and you have different options for siding up top. This has the standard HK G36 dual optic. It has a red dot optic up top and a three power optic down below. Now one of the downsides of this piggyback setup on this gun, very small field of view. So you see a lot of guys want to pick a tinny rail on these and put something like an aim point or a different optic on it. Now what makes it an automatic rifle variant in the G36 is primarily two things. One, the handguard with the bipod and somewhat heavier barrel underneath the handguard. So it's a little bit heavier than the standard G36E, which would be the full-size variant of the G36 that would be the kissing cousin to this gun. About all the G36s are very, very reliable guns. It's one of the things that HK did their homework on is they made these things extremely reliable. They use a short stroke gas tappet piston that they adapted from the AR-18 design. All right, the pusher rod remains cool to the touch. However, the gas piston right there, you definitely don't want to touch home slice because it is hot. The excess gas is vented out the front. So once the gas comes up, pushes the piston back, there's a little vent opened up and it pushes the rest out the front in this particular barrel length. Pretty slick operation. Also, this has been adapted to the HK416. It has the byproduct of keeping the bolt carrier group cooler and cleaner. Alright gang, recoil impulse in the MG36 is pretty solid, straight back to the rear, easy to keep it on target. Now I use the red dot on that, and for these targets here, these steel targets we're shooting at, it makes more sense than using the magnified optic. That's where you switch down and you take a more precise shot at distance. Now one of the things about this gun, when it runs dry and you switch mags, you have to come up and release the charging handle from the top. The charging handle flips both ways, left hand, right hand. It's a totally ambidextrous gun, it even has an ambidextrous safety lever on both sides. There is no external bolt release besides the charging handle. Now, the X-8 is nothing more than a modified, updated G36. So they actually put a bolt release down here inside the trigger guard. Magazine release is just like that on an AK flapper. Also, remember this replaced the G3 in German service. So it had essentially the same magazine release as the one on the G3. Gang, one of the things about the G36 is you can actually fire it with the stock folded. HK designed it so the rounds eject through this little window right here. Let me show you. So in case you get out of a vehicle or, or a position where you have the stock folded, then you can bring it out and engage real quickly. Then you simply extend it and drive on. Pretty slick. All right, gang, it's time to go big with the Beta C mag that was developed for the G36. One hot. You know, just shooting at static steel gets a little boring after a while. It's time to ratchet it up a notch. You know what I'm talking about, Holmes? You know 
what, that was a little bit disappointing. Let's see if we can't fix that little wagon. talking about. That was cool.